The immortal pen of James Fenimore Cooper brings you thrilling tales of excitement. Blazing action on the early American frontier. Stirring adventures filled with the daring and courage of Hawkeye, first of the long rifles, and his blood brother, Chingachgook, last of the Mohicans. Sorry, Hawkeye. Wings of young bird tire quick. No reason to apologize, Greg. We've been setting a right good pace. There's no reason why we can't rest a while. You don't have to, on account of me. <laughs> Wings of old bird get much tired, too. Eight days on trail. Make young brave much tired. Especially when he's only used to walking around the streets of the town. Oh, I like the forest, but it's so strange. Well, Meadville's only a spit and a holler from here, lad. Ain't that. I was just thinking. Before Pa died, he kept saying, as soon as I got up out of bed, he'd take me along these trails himself. It sort of makes me feel all alone. Well, you're not exactly alone, Greg. You got an aunt and uncle waiting to make a new home for you. And everywhere you look, you'll be seeing places that your ma and pa loved. Besides, not every young one gets a silver mine left to him. You and Chinichkook are real kind. I'm glad the governor sent you to take me, instead of anybody else. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's get going. That is, if you've rested enough. <laughs> Good bread. In forest, even fireball have I. Stay down! You stay behind tree. Brave warrior. Run like frightened deer. Yeah, an engine. I just got a glimpse of him. Not enough to be able to recognize him again. How about you? No. Too much cover. You know, he seemed to be shooting at the boy. My brother think that Indian make ambush only on boy? Uh, whatever we think, we better not let on to him. He's scared enough as it is. Can I come out now? Sure, Greg. Some of those shots looked like they were meant for me. Oh, I don't think so, Greg. I think it was probably some renegade Indian who just naturally hates everybody. Okay. Blood trail. We follow? I'd sure like to, but I think it's best we get the boy on to Meadsville. Come on, Greg, let's get going. You know, Em and the boy here kind of resemble each other. Yeah, almost like Greg was her son instead of her nephew. Well, he's going to be my son. The one I never had. Yeah, mine too. Just like you was my own flesh and blood, boy. He wait till you try Em's cobbler. Boy, it's the most mouth-watering in Meadville. Hey, Mr. Bailey, you, you had any trouble hereabouts with renegades or outlaws? Oh, no. We got civilization here in Meadville. Most of the folks hereabouts, they hunt or traps. The rest of them works in the silver mine. The one Greg's inheriting? Yeah, yeah, I've been managing it for the boy's father. I hope Greg's gonna keep me on. You bet I will. I wouldn't know how to run the place myself. 
<laughs> You're not one to be asking idle questions, Hawkeye. Especially about outlaws and renegades. Just outside of Meadville, we've become the object of some rifle fire. Chingachgook was a mite quicker. Whoever it was ran off with a rifle ball in his leg. Oh, probably one of them heathens from the Cayuga village. Who's that? Oh, name's Longknife. He helps around the house. Works at the mine, too. That leg of his appears to be bothering him some. Yeah, he hurt it in an accident, too, oh, a couple of weeks ago. Never complains about it none, though. Two weeks ago? Yeah, must have been that. Ain't that so, Em? Long night. Friend Chingachgook here is a good medicine man. Why don't you let him have a look at your leg? Don't let go, he can touch me. Well, I guess if a man doesn't want to be helped, that's his privilege. Well, Long Knife's an Iroquois, maybe that's the reason. Iroquois and Mohican are same. If hurt, need help. It's a mighty nice supper, Mrs. Bailey, but me and Chingachgook have got to be getting along. Oh, but it's not finished yet. I've still got the animal cutlet to serve. Well, if you'll save us a piece, then we'll be sure and come back again. Are you heading uh, straight back for the capital? Gosh, I thought you were going to stay around for a while. That we are, lad, but we've got to deliver some letters to the garrison. Well, you'll find Captain Milburn at the uh, blockhouse down to the end of the street. Thanks, Mr. Bailey. My brother, I feel dark storm ahead. Yeah, man-made storm, Chingachgook. Did you notice that Iroquois buckskins? There was a small, hastily made patch on one leg. On same leg as limp. Could have been made by a rifle ball. Well, it looks like we may have more to do here than just deliver this mail. I can't go along with your suspicion, Hawkeye. I've heard Bailey speaking about that boy, bursting with pride. Just like a father expecting the arrival of a firstborn son. Well, that's a mighty touching picture you're painting, Captain. You really think Bailey's the sort who'd get sentimental over a boy who's a stranger to him? They're not strangers. He's the boy's uncle. By marriage. Greg doesn't even remember seeing the Baileys before. You sure you're not imagining things, Hawkeye? A man doesn't agree to make a home for an orphan boy, then try to kill him. Silver and gold have a way of twisting the best intentions to murder and violence, even among blood kin. And I'm not imagining that Greg owns a whole silver mine that it'd be Bailey's if that engine's rifle ball had found its mark. You're making a good case against Bailey, Hawkeye, excepting for one thing. It's based on a patch on a pair of Iroquois buckskins. It's more than that, Captain. It might prove that Long Knife wasn't hurt in the mine two weeks ago, like Bailey said. Mr. Bailey's a respected citizen in this community, and his word carries a good deal of weight. You bring me more than your suspicion, then I'll take action. You've got your job, Captain. I've got mine. I promised the governor that I'd see the boy through to safety. I'd see you to come to step. He's no longer your concern. Well, if you don't mind, Captain, I think me and Chingachgook will stick around and keep an eye on the boy till we're sure he's safe. Pull strong, even. Then you shoot straight. I just thought you and your new friend would like some of this cobbler. Oh, nothing that hit the spot better. Thanks, Aunt Emma. You are, little bear. Mm. Mm. This is great. Go on, sink your sweet tooth into it. Little bear like. This is more better than May's honey cake. See, I told you. Well, what's going on here? Picnic? Hey, Em, you know that this fancy stuff will spoil Greg's appetite for victuals he ought to be eating? Well, it ain't the end of the world. Didn't mean for you to stand there with a half-eaten cobbler. Go ahead, finish it, both of you. <laughs> Where do you two latch on to each other? Just outside the settlement. He's a Cayuga chief's son. Oh, Red Cloud's boy, eh? Well, I'm glad to meet you. 
That does my heart good to see you found a friend, son. Make you feel at home all that sooner. Little bear happy he find friend, too. Well, I hate to be busting up your pleasure, but Greg's got some work to do. You know, around here, chores comes first. We all got to pitch in and help. Thanks for teaching me how to shoot straight with this. Will you come back tomorrow? Little bear come when friend want him. He's a nice boy. For an Indian. Uh, I got some supplies to pack. I want Long Knight to help me. You get on over to the mine, tell him to meet me at the trading post. Oh, and Greg, take the shortcut that I showed you. Yes, sir. Morning, Miss Bailey. We came by to see Greg. Well, he won't be back for a while. Mort sent him to get long nights. Well, we promised to say goodbye to him before we left. Which way did he go? Did you think we could catch up with him? He took the shortcut to the mine, the one over the hill. Thank you, ma'am. We'd better get to that boy before long night does. We hurry. Awful close, Greg. That was a trap. It was meant for me. Somebody's trying to kill me. But who? Nobody knew I was coming this way, sir. Uncle Mort. He told me to come this way. Young brave, not stampede. Much easier to kill if alone in forest. But I've got to get away. Hide someplace. The safest place for you is home. I've got no home. Well, I'm not so sure about that. You just stick real close to your Aunt Emma. Keep quiet about what happened out here today. But Uncle Mort will be there, too. Well, we, we don't have any proof that he fixed this trap. Sides will be around to keep an eye on you. <laughs> Lone wolf, never attack whole herd of buffalo. Wait for stray, then attack. You meant it when you said you'd keep an eye on me. If I didn't, we wouldn't be here right now. Where's Greg? I played with his Indian friend. Emma, it just don't seem right for that boy to be always hanging around with an Indian. There's no harm in him enjoying himself with Little Bear. Well, there's lots of other boys he could make friends with right here in the settlement. Yeah, maybe I'd better go and have a talk with him. Mort. You really like him, don't you? Well, of course I do, Emma. I'm the boy's uncle, ain't I? Then you won't let any harm come to him. Now, why would I let any harm come to him? Right after my brother died, you acted sort of like the mine belonged to you. And it would with the boy out of the way. Emma! Oh, Emma, you can't believe what you're saying. You know how I feel about the boy, like, like he was my own son.
wait. I feel smell of death on wind. Bailey can't afford a cold-blooded killing. He's got to make it look like an accident. I reckon he's going to give himself plenty of time to get clear before it happens. Oh, well, here we are, Greg. Now, uh, something here I want to show you. Uh, look, you'll find a candle over in the next tunnel, just over against the wall. Bring it here, will you, son? Oh, uh, here's a flint and steel. You may as well light it. There you are. Me not understand white man's law. We know Bailey want to kill young white brave. But my brother say we must wait for proof. What good is proof if young white brave is dead? I can't find it, Uncle Mort. Well, just keep looking. It's around there someplace. scared and run off. We just got out of the mine as it caved in. Greg must have got scared and run off. Thought I'd better come and report this to you before we went out looking for him. It's a hard thing you're asking me to believe, Hawkeye. The boy's own uncle. Bailey's no blood relation to Greg, and he wants that silver mine bad. You'll have to bring formal charges against Bailey. I'd be glad to. Captain, Captain Milburn, my nephew, Greg. What about it? He's been kidnapped by the Cayugas. I don't believe it. Look, if you don't believe me, you can ask Swanson. Or Carter or McKinley here. They all saw the Cayugas going off with Greg. There was nothing we could do. We were only a handful against all them savages. We figure it's a job for the soldiers, Captain. Maybe so. Maybe. And while we're standing here flapping our tongues, that boy's being led off deeper and deeper into the woods. I suppose you're right, Betty. All right, I'll send out a patrol. Captain, if you send soldiers again, the Cayugas, they'll be bloodshed. Whatever chance we got of finding Greg will be gone. Maybe that's what you'd really like, Bailey. All I want is my boy back, safe. The best way for that to happen is to let me and Chingachgook go after him. Then the Cayugas won't be sharpening up their spears and fitting arrows to their bows. Captain, are you going to shove your responsibility over onto this outsider and his Indian friend? We won't need more than 24 hours, Captain. Very well. 24 hours it is. After that, I'll be forced to send in troops. Don't start timing this until after we're out the door. to Cayuga village? Why? We came to get the white boy. To take back to white man's village. Young white brave belong in white man's settlement. Hawkeye, Shingishkuk. They're my friends. They come to take you back to white man's village. Did you, Hawkeye? That's right. Why young white brave come to Indian village? You know why. I had to. Little Bear had the Cayugas bring me here to protect me. I said I wanted to take you back to the settlement, Greg, not your uncle. You go. Got to talk to you about Greg. Go ahead, talk. 
When he first came, you made me lie about Long Knife's leg getting hurt in the mine. Mort, it didn't happen in the mine. He got wounded out in the woods, trying to kill Greg. Why would Long Knife want to do that? Because you ordered him to. Sniveling fool! That brat's the only thing that stands between me and wealth! Mort! If you so much as open your mouth, I'll break your scrawny neck! What happened to you? I'm wore out. Plum wore out. We caught up with him, had a fight. We got the boy back. Chingachgook's wounded. Well, where are they now? I had to leave him at the pine tree clearing. Chingachgook couldn't go on. The boy's with him. They need help. I'll see they get some help. You tell anyone else about them? No, I'm too tired. Besides, you're the boy's uncle. Yeah, I sure am. You take the Mohican. The boy's mine. Both of you. There's your respected citizen for you, Captain. Here is evil one who helped Bailey. Take him away. Well, I reckon you won't have to hide anymore, Greg. I'm sending your husband down to the capital, Mrs. Bailey. He'll have to stand trial and serve his sentence there. As for you, Greg, I don't know exactly what to do. I'm all right, but what's going to happen to Aunt Emma? Well, there we may have to go to the circuit court. I didn't know. I swear I had nothing to do with my husband trying to kill Greg. Well, uh, no one's saying you did, ma'am. But everyone's thinking it. It's, it's, it's true. I began to think something was wrong, but I was afraid. I wasn't sure. But I am sure I love Greg. He's the only kin I've got in the world. I... I guess you don't believe me. I believe you, Anne Emma. We all believed in your innocence, ma'am. But Greg had to make the choice for himself. <sighs> Eyes of love are never blind. Find trail in darkest forests. Join us again at this same time next week for another of James Fenimore Cooper's gripping tales of the early American frontier. Another exciting adventure of Hawkeye and his blood brother, Chingachgook, last of the Mohicans. <laughs>